So when they talk to the kids and send them on their way, you know, uncle and them say, uh, you know, they auntie bring in the 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 the, the uh, sweet potato pie. She's a producer. Um, he's a producer. He's been working at the job for twenty years. These are the type of people that if somebody dies in your family, like a kid or something, one of your children. You can go to them and say, we don't have any money to bury them. We didn't have no insurance. We didn't have nothing. They can cough up 1200 1500 to help bury your child. Then you got the consumers in life. The consumers in life are the people that show up at the, at the family reunion looking for something to smoke, looking for something to drink, but they ain't brought nothing to the table. The, the consumers in life are the people who... You getting dressed to go to a club. It's three of y'all in the house. Everybody getting dressed to go to the club. They ain't saying nothing. As soon as y'all get down to the front door of the club, they ain't got no money. They don't have any money. They say, hey man, pay my way in the club. And you looking at them like, you should have told us this back at the house because we'd have left you there. These are consumers. So as soon as you get in the club, now, oh, hey man, buy me a drink. You know, they live their lives to consume everything they touch. Ain't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of, but guess what? They got Jordans on their feet. Ain't got, so, you know, these are the people, these are the people in this country who are producers. In this, now, the, the, the consumers in this in this country usually have messed up credit, okay? But like I said, everything ties back in to what I first said when I first started this commentary. You know, there is 60% of things in this country we cannot help. We have to raise our kids and send them into government if we want to change that 60% of the things that we want to do to change this country. Now, the 40% comes in, we have things that we can do as people in the minority communities to change our plight in life. And we're going to talk about credit today. And we're going to talk about trade lines. Now, like I said, trade lines have been around for a long time. Trade lines is real. Trade lines is legal. Trade lines is how you uh, uh, get your credit back right, even though they're in the 400, the, the 500, the 550s. People have been doing this for a long time. Like I said earlier on the show, the Mexican family, people hate Mexicans, people hate foreigners. All these people are doing is going out utilizing the things that we as American citizens have access to from birth. We're just not educated on it because people are getting money off of us not knowing about these things that we can do. But when the foreigner comes in, he has lawyers and midway people, middlemen between the government and them that helps them get green cards and also educates them and lets them know, look, you can apply for loans because you're a foreigner. You can apply for trade lines because the two people in this country that don't have credit are young adults from the age of maybe 18 or 17 down and foreigners. When a foreigner comes here, gets a green card, and has his social security number, it has no credit on it. So some of you are sitting back saying, well, how in the world these foreigners are coming over here getting these corner stores? They're not hustling. They're not here selling drugs. These people are utilizing tricks and trade and trade craft things that's in our government that's meant for anybody that wants to get involved in it that's in this country. And trade lines is one of them. That Mexican family I talked about at the beginning of the show, they came here, got their green card, they legal, got a, got a you know, social security number and everything. They didn't have any credit attached to their credit. They went out and got trade lines. Every two months, they paid $250, add 12000 to their credit report. Two more months, add $250 more, added 12000 more. By the end of that year, these people had enough credit built up on a zero balance credit report to go out and buy a huge dually truck 
that they can start their business with. These are tactics that we have access to. These are tactics to where, again, like I said, we can't do nothing about the 60% of the problem with the wealth gap in America when it comes to us minorities, but we do have things that we can do as far as, you know, social issues and credit issues and, and, and things that's going on in our communities that we can control. And credit is what one of the subjects I want to talk about today. We're not going to get into some of the other things that fall under the 40 percent, things such as marriage, things such as start, stop having so many kids by so many different people. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. If you don't want to have a baby by a person, why are you having sex with that person? I'm not going to lay down having sex with a person if I'm not willing to have kids by that person. I mean, it makes sense. Think about it. It should make sense. So there are things in our community that falls up under the 40% range that we can control in the minority communities. And credit is one of them. And credit is what we're going to talk about today. I'm not going to you know, go into other things. Now, uh, trade lines is uh like I don't want you to go back and say that you know it's a it's a loan it's a it's a credit card no it's not that the money you pay for trade lines you can't get it back it can range anywhere from $180 to $300 to $800 depending on how much credit you want to add to your credit report okay now it takes about a month before that credit report jumps. And the reason why I wanted my aunt to look at my live stream, because I know she's going to be mad at me because she told me one day we was in a car. She said, nephew, uh, you know, I got my credit built up. I had to pay this company $90 a month. I, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, you know, she didn't have to do that. So, so because she could have easily went down there, got a trade line or two, added to her credit report, and boosted her credit up to 700 to 800 within a year without even have to pay somebody, you know, $90 a month. But the reason why these credit fix people don't tell you about this is because they're making money off of trying to fix what you've already broken. You understand what I'm saying? And... The debt, the debtors, the, the people who collect debt, they want you to pay that debt. And if everybody knows about trade lines, they would stop paying most of their debt. Which they, now, I'm not advocating for that. You should pay your debt. If you owe people, pay them. You understand what I'm saying? Pay them. If you owe them, pay them. If you, if you know you got some, some uh, payday loans out there somewhere, pay them. But the thing about it is, is... You got people sitting around with a 400, a 500, a low 600 credit rating, and they can't even get a $500 loan. They go in a place and say, man, I need $1,500, man, to, to keep my car, pay my last car note, or they're going to take my car. And they go down here, and these people say, well, during your credit report, we can't give you nothing but $400. Trade line stops all of that. But you gotta you gotta do it right. You can't abuse it. Go down there and get you twelve thousand worth of credit added to your credit report. Wait two months. You wait two months. Go down there and get twelve thousand more added to your credit report. Wait a couple of months. Let that build up. Let it build up. Then after about a year, you have an eight hundred credit score. You can go down there and get a fifty thousand dollar credit card. Because you have an 800 credit score. You got to do it right. You can't go out here and try and abuse the system. So, you know, and, and, and it goes back to what I was saying about consumers and producers. You got people who are consumers. They're sitting around right now listening to what I'm saying. And they're plotting. Thinking how I'm gonna uh, Judah system? How I'm gonna uh, I shouldn't say Judah system. 
That's a that's an old uh, 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 racial slur. But they but they they trying to figure out how to get over. That's what they're thinking right now. How they how they how they finna get over? And they shouldn't. It's simple. Just go down there, find one of these companies. I'm 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 a black company. Pay for trade lines. You pay them 180 bucks, 250 bucks. Guess what? You got a trade line. Let it wait and marinate on your on your credit report for two months. You don't raise your credit score up 40 or 50 points. It's the simple things we can do. Now, when I get back from this commercial break, I'm going to tell you about the dark side of, of uh, trade lines and, and, and the things that, that's going on with that. Because just like it's always good, there's always bad things that's involved in it too. Okay? So when I get back from uh, this short break, we're going to get into that. Okay, and we're back. And uh, like I was telling you earlier about uh, trade lines and credit and the 40% of things that we can do in the minority community that can change our financial plight in life. There are things out here that we can do in our community to change our financial plight. We don't do it because some of us aren't educated on it, you know, but... You know, you go to foreign households and you know you just seen these people come here, move into the neighborhood, and within a year, you know, they have their own business. They're selling you perms and hair weave. They're selling you uh, uh, products like liquor. They got corner stores everywhere. And people are literally hating these people for taking advantage of things that we as Americans that were born here in this country have access to. We have it. There's no reason why somebody listen to my voice right now on this broadcast. Somebody listening to my voice right now on this broadcast should have a four or five or low 600 credit rating at all. There's no reason why somebody listening to this broadcast right now shouldn't be able to go down there and get five, ten thousand dollars in a loan. You know, and 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 this is serious because like I said, uh this is this is what I do. This is my this is my contribution back to my community. You know, and I'm gonna plug my brothers in from brothers uh, my Masonic brothers from Nimrod Nine. We do we do great work in the communities. You know what I'm saying? We do great work. You know, we just got uh uh Lodge of the Year. You know, I want to give a shout out to them brothers. You know, I'm going to have some of them come in here and talk about things in the community that, that we can help and we can change to help uplift each other. But back to trade lines, I promised that on this segment, I was going to give you the bad side of it. Now, when you go in and start Googling and looking up trade lines, 
you're going to see that, that, that man, I listened to Marcus, man, on his show, and he was for real. Their trade lines is real. I can fix my credit without even having to go to a credit fixer. Okay, now, you're going to see something pop up called CPNs. Now, CPNs is basically... Is, is, is basically another social security number. And CPNs was introduced into the government in the 70s, back when Charles Manson went on that murder spree and was killing uh, movie stars and things like that. The government decided that we got to protect our millionaires and billionaires. So, so CPN is a, is, a credit, is, a, is a credit protection number. And what a CPN does is, when you buy a CPN, it basically has no credit on it. And you can use a CPN to buy things. You can buy credit cards with a CPN. The credit card is still in your name and it's still attached to you. You can buy a house. Well, I don't think you can buy a house. I'm going to look into that. But you can buy certain things with a CPN that movie stars and stuff like that buy. And it won't be attached to you to the point where people can look it up. Say a movie star buys a mansion in Beverly Hills. He buys it with a CPN. It's his house. It's his mansion. But he bought it with a CPN. And that keeps the paparazzi from finding out where he lives. Because for some strange reason, paparazzi and certain individuals can get your social security number and find out where you live, where you be at, where you hang at. So the government decided to start up this program where you can get a CPN and basically utilize that fake. It's not a fake number. It's a real number, but you can utilize that extra uh, social security number to, to get things for you and your family to keep yourself private. OK, now the danger with CPNs is. You got people out here selling fake CPNs, OK, CPNs are legal. Trade lines are legal. But you got people out here selling fake CPNs. What they're doing is they're going and finding somebody that died around the time you was born. Usually before they started getting credit. They get these people who passed away social security number and they sell it to you for 100 bucks. So now you're going around with a CPN which basically is somebody else's social security number that died and you're living off this number. It's illegal. You can go to jail for it. Don't do it. But you got people, like I said, consumers and producers. You got people in life who are producers and consumers. Remember what I said? It's going to all tie back together when I talked about consumers and producers. It's going to all tie back together. You got people sitting around right now plotting how they're going to get over and you don't have to. If somebody walked up to me right now today and said, you know what? I work at Walmart, but I got a CPN. I'm not going to believe it. Now, if Bill Gates came to me and said he had a CPN, I would believe it. Because most, most of the time, you're going to see millionaires and billionaires with CPNs because CPNs protect their identity. It's legal. But they got it the right way. So be careful about CPNs because once you start adding trade lines to your credit, you're going to start Googling trade lines and trying to find out how you can boost your credit score and get better credit rating and get your credit back where it's supposed to be. So you can go out and buy your car and buy your house. You're going to run across websites that's trying to sell you CPNs. I'm not saying they're all illegal. But you got to be careful and do your background checks on these people because some of them are faking. Some of them are trying to sell you a dead person's social security number. Don't do it. You can get anywhere from 10 to 15 years because it's wire fraud. It's bank fraud. And sometimes they might even be able to charge you for bank robbery because what you're doing is you're basically getting loans and getting credit off of a dead person's social security number. CPNs are legal, but you got to get it the right way. And nine times out of 10, if you're working at Walmart somewhere or Bojangles, you're not going to have a CPN number because you don't need it. You're not rich enough to even have it. Why are you trying to hide? 
So avoid CPNs. The best thing you can do in the community, if you got bad credit, is fix the credit that you got. Don't try to say, you know what, forget that credit I got. I'm going to go out here and get me a CPN with no credit on it and build on it and put trade lines on it. Don't do it. Because nine times out of ten, you're going to get something bogus. And if you get something bogus, you might last a year. You might. They, there have been people who lived off CPNs for 10 years and never even knew that the CPN they bought was a dead person's social security number. Until the feds came knocking on their door and said, hey, up until this time, you was using this social security number. And then you turn around and start using this CPN, which is not yours. So who did you get it from? So they're not going to take no, ah, uh, 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 they're not going to hear all of that. They're going to lock you up. So quit all the scheming, quit all the trying to get over, and just fix the credit that you already have. If you got messed up credit, get you a trade line, pay for it, give the people your social security number. They're going to add that trade line to your social security number that you already have that's legal. And it's going to boost your credit rating. It's going to give you 40 points, 30 points, 20 points. Wait two months, buy you some more. Boost your credit rating. If you got a business, most people don't understand your business has its own social security number. It's called an EIN. So if you have a business that has an EIN, that business has, like, like my radio show right here, right now, has an EIN number. It has no credit on it because I just started it. So I can go and boost my credit rating by adding trade lines to my business credit. And within a year, I can go buy a car with my credit rating from my EIN number. So, so there are things that we can do in our communities to, to help uplift each other and help uplift ourselves and our family. So, so basically what you should do is try to do it the right way. Don't try to uh, 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 cut out uh, the middle man and try to do this, try to do No, because that goes back to what I was talking about, producers and consumers. The consumer is going to try to take the easy route because they don't have patience. They want it now. They're going to go out here and buy a trade line, boost their credit up to 600 points, and go out here and get a $1,500 loan because they couldn't get a $1,500 loan at first. They can only get two, three hundred. They're going to boost their credit, go out here and get a $1,500 loan, buy them a box Chevy, and put some damn rims on it. And then what? Your credit back messed up again. And you ain't did nothing for your family. So have patience. Go out here, buy your credit a trade line, put it on your credit report. Go out here and, and, and two months later, buy you another one. Wait a whole year. Get your, get your credit to 800 Then you can go out here and buy you a home. I don't care where you're working at. You could be working at uh, uh, Popeye's. You can still go out here and buy your home with an $800 credit rating. And what makes me mad about the whole uh, trade line thing is this goes back to what we do in our community to help each other. This goes back to that. Your favorite rappers, these guys is making all this money off you. These guys are producers. They're counting on you being the consumer to be in the dark about certain things. When you hear a person like Lil Wayne talk about how you got a black card, you can have a black card too. A black card ain't nothing but unlimited credit card. That's all it is. You get an 800 credit rating. You might not exactly get a black card, but you can get an unlimited credit card. They have them. They're not necessarily the black card, but they have unlimited credit cards out here. Or you can get four to fifty thousand dollar credit cards. And things like this helps you because, say, if your niece die, she get hit by a car. You done straightened out your credit and went down there and got a $30,000 credit card, but you don't hardly ever use it. And your sister come to you or your brother come to you and say, man, I ain't got no money to bury my child. You can take that debit card, that, that, that credit card, 
that you just helped build your credit with and got you $30,000 and go down there. And it takes about three to 5000 to bury somebody. And you got it. You say, hey, man, you know, she was my baby too. You got it. You know, how many of y'all prepared for that? How many of y'all prepared for a loved one in your family to come to you and say, you know, such and such done passed, man. We ain't even got enough money to bury him. How many of y'all prepared to step up and say, you know what? I got it. And that's what I mean when I say do things the right way and you're going to be all right. Do things the right way. And the reason I had to tell you about CPNs because CPNs are real. It's not conspiracy theory. Trade lines is not conspiracy theory. Trade lines is not fake. All of it's real. But there are people out here who are consumers and trying to get over because they want it now. They're going to go out here. They're going to try to sell you a CPN that's not legal. Don't do it. Do your background check on these people because they might be legit. And if they're legit, more than likely, they're going to sell you a CPN number for damn near $1,000 or maybe more. But I wouldn't buy a CPN for 100 bucks. The only people I know of that have CPNs are millionaires. I don't know nobody working at Walmart with a CPN number. So if you got a CPN number, you working at Walmart, more than likely that number is fake. You just got bamboozled. So, so there are things in our community, and this show right here is going to be about credit. You know, uh, there are other issues that deal with the 40 percent of things we can do to change our plight in life when it comes to the inequality and wealth. But like I said, the 60% of the inequality and wealth dealing with minorities, we can only change that in Congress. You know, the police brutality, uh, 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 the, the unfair voting rights and things of that nature. We can only change that through Congress. And the only way you can change that in Congress is if we start raising our kids and pushing them instead of pushing them with that football in their hand. Hey, man, go down there and, and, and go and run for city council. You know, our district needs you. Go down there and run for mayor of your city or your town. Our, our, our city needs you because, you know, we've been having this Caucasian mayor for 20 years and all the, the Caucasian neighborhoods got good roads, but all the, the areas where all the blacks stay, got so, so, you know, like I said, there are things that we can do in life as far as the 40% to, to change our plight in life. And that's what this show, The Daily Read, is going to be about. Every time I do a show, I'm going to do my research. It ain't going to be something that, that's going to be conspiracy theories. We're going to do news. We're going to do sports. We're going to do politics. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do things that's trending. We're going to do all kinds of things. I'm going to have guests in here, and, and we're going we're gonna to keep it live for you. But it's going to be real. It ain't going to be nothing that you can't go and search yourself and, and, and find out. But I'm going to let you know what it is. You know, this is my contribution back to my community. Now, we're going we gonna to jump into um, EIN numbers and business credit on this last segment. Because some of you out there really want to have two separate Social Security numbers to build credit on. And I'm trying to tell you that the CPN route is not the route you want to take. Okay? That's the route for me. Now, if you go out here and win the lottery for $40 billion, cool. Go out there and find you a CPN and use it to protect yourself and your family from being found out where you at. But if you're not a millionaire, don't worry about no CPN. Get you some trade lines. Fix the credit that you already got. Now, if you just have to have a separate line of credit, I suggest you start a business, get you an a EIN, and do it that route. Now, I'm going to go over that on the next segment. So, I'm going to take a quick commercial break.
All right, we're back. Now, uh, this is the Daily Read with your host, Marcus Gentry. And uh, like I was telling you before on the last segment that uh, I was going to get into uh, business license and uh, EIN numbers. Uh, most of the people out there who have small businesses or business, they know already know about EIN numbers. Even people who have charities or, or uh, you know, uh, social things that they do in the community, they know about EIN numbers. But what I don't think a lot of people know about when it comes to EIN numbers that you can add credit to it. Your EIN number is uh, basically a social security number for your business. So we're going to skip the CPN. I've already told you that nine times out of ten, if you get a CPN, it's illegal. You can get them now. This is because you have people like Sammy the Bull. OK, he was a notorious uh, gangster, a notorious murderer. He told on his people. They sent him out to Utah or somewhere out west and gave him a CPN number. That means hitmen can't find him. If he goes to somewhere and buys something, it can't be traced back to him personally because he's not using his social security number. And CPNs are legal. Okay? So I'm not trying to discourage you from getting it, but I am trying to discourage you from getting it illegally. And I, like I said, it goes back to what I was saying about the producers and the consumers. You got some people out there who are lazy, who don't want to do it the right way. You know what I'm saying? So avoid the CPNs. And if you just have to have two separate streams of, of uh, uh, credit, get you a small business. So you have your social security number, which has your credit attached to it. And then you have your business number, which is your EIN that has that credit attached to it. So what you do is you go out here, you buy you some trade lines. Like me, say, say for instance, me and two or three of my, my brothers, we get together and we say, hey man, let's start us a business. The first year, the business, let's say we're going to start a flower shop. We don't have no flowers. We don't have no business. We're running a flower shop out of our a bedroom apartment, out of one of the bedrooms in our apartment. We got a computer set up. Uh, we got a file cabinet. We got a desk. Okay, if your business doesn't have revenue that first year, don't worry about it. Because what you want to do is, if you start a business, your business has a zero credit rating because it's a new business. So what you can do is you can go out, get you some trade lines, and add it to your personal SSN number and your business EIN number. Wait two months, go back. Add some more trade lines to your EIN number. Add some more trade lines to your social security number. Wait a couple of months. By the end of a year, you will have built up, you will have built up a 800 credit rating on both your C, your SSN number and your EIN number. Now, you don't wait a year. Now you can take that business number, go to a bank, and tell that bank, I want a loan for $50,000 for my business. Wow. It can happen. And you will get it. That flower shop that didn't have any revenue for that first year because you was building credit on it. Now you can take $50,000 or you can go get a $50,000 credit card. And you can go down there and buy you some flowers. Buy you a refrigerator to put into, to put into your building. You can go down. See, this, this is why... I, I I really don't, I get mad when I see young men and women who find out the game and they don't spread the wealth when it comes to knowledge. And the reason I get mad about that is because you see a lot of people out here starting these uh, small car dealerships. They go out here and they start these uh, 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 lawn care services. You know these guys. You're like, man, that guy must be selling dope. Nine times out of ten, he wasn't selling no dope. What he did was he went down there, got a business license for a lawn care service. He didn't have no trailer. He didn't have no lawnmowers. He didn't have no weed eaters. He just had a business license. And he slowly, over a year, without telling you because it ain't none of your business, but what he did was he slowly, over a year's time, built credit through trade lines on his EIN number. So at the end of that year, he had thirty, forty thousand 40000 on credit 
attached to his credit rating for his business. So then he went down there and got a $30,000 credit card. Now he has enough money to buy him a zero-turn lawnmower, a trailer, and a used truck so he can start his lawn care service. And guess what he do? He go out here in the community and he charges you, the consumer, because it goes, everything's a cycle. Everything goes back in a cycle. The consumers and the producers. So what he did was now he knows he's a producer, but you're a consumer. You you in the dog. You don't know nothing about these uh credit lines and trade lines. So now he's charging you forty dollars or fifty dollars to cut his grass. To cut, you know, to cut to cut the grass. And you saying to yourself, man, I knew him a year ago, man. He ain't had no truck, he ain't had no no lawnmower, he ain't have nothing. All of a sudden, he riding around here with a with a big old truck with a stick on the side of it saying, uh, you know, he, he does major cuts on grass. He did it through the process. He did it the right way. My thing is, you know, spread the wealth when it comes to knowledge. And the reason why is because we already are falling behind economically when it comes to us being minorities in this country. And the more people have knowledge about things that they can do to change their lives, because I know it just dawned on a lot of young men that know me, that know, because I've been sitting on the couches with them, sipping on some wine. I'm, I'm sipping on something right now. I'm sipping on something right now. But I know these brothers. We done sat around and played cars. Everybody scrounging up a couple of dollars to go down there and buy my beer. You ain't got to be broke. You ain't gotta, you ain't got to be doing that. But the knowledge wasn't there for you. Some people try to keep that from you because they know you're a consumer. And if they're producers, they can easily manipulate the system the right way and have you paying for their services. But me, I'm not going to hold nothing back from you. I'm going to let you know the real. That's what we do here, you know, from uh, uh, the Daily Read. You know, we're going to hit you with sports, uh, 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 politics, news. I haven't even gotten to the news for the day. I might not even get to it because my, my show is only an hour. And uh, I might not get to What I'm going to start doing, I'm going to start doing the news at the beginning of the show before I go into my commentary about the things that's affecting the, the minority communities in my area. So so we're not even gonna get to the news today. You know, I got some things I want to say about uh Donald Trump and the South because he didn't show up in the bubble. He didn't pop up in the bubble. Donald Trump is not some wild uh wild card that just popped up out the blue. This goes all the way back to the Civil War, which is a which is something that's gonna be saved later for another show. OK, because right now I want to focus on credit. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to put too much on your mind, because sometimes when you when you turn the light on in people's eyes, they'll turn away from you. They'll turn away from you. They want to stay in the darkness because the, the light's hurting their eyes. So I'm not going to put too much on you, but that's going to be for no matter of fact, I might do uh, something about. The, the Civil War and how it leads up into what's going on today with our politics. I might do that on the next show or the show after next, but I want to stick with, with credit and I want to stick with what's going on with uh, the, the minority community and how we're flagging behind. Because like I said, 60% of it, we can't control unless we start raising our babies to stop having felonies because it's a pipeline from high school straight into the prison system. And if you can't, uh, if you have a felony, you can't vote, which means you can't put people in politics that you want in there to help you. And if you have a felony, you can't have a gun, which means you can't defend your family. And if you have a felony, guess what? There are a lot of things that you can't do, like a job. People would deny you a job. So that means you can't take care of your family. So what they're doing is our government and our state government is having a, 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 a it's, 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 it's called 
It's called institutional racism. Okay. And the institutional racism is something we can't control unless we send people to Congress and to our state government. And it all ties back to the 60% that we can't control. Now, the 40%, which is what I'm talking about, part of it is credit. We can control that. Okay. And there are other social issues in our community that we can control. Which, which which falls up under the 40% of things we can do to change our financial plight in this country. So uh, to finish up, I want to talk about uh, the EIN numbers. If you just have to have, if you just have to have two separate lines of credit, you want to have a $30,000 credit up under your personal name and you want to have a $30,000 credit up under your business name. If you just have to have two forms of uh, credit, two lines of credit, get you a small business. Even if the small business doesn't make money for the first year, it's okay. As long as you got that EIN number and it's not free people to start a small business, there are certain things you have to have to start a small business. Like I have my office. You got to have an office. It doesn't have to be a real office. It can be a room in your house. The room cannot have furniture in it, like, like bedroom furniture. It has to have a desk. It has to have a file cabinet. It has to have at least some type of documentation uh, uh, set up like a computer. Because when they come out and see your setup, you can have a business running out of your house, but you got to have it looking like a proper office. And it's going to cost you about a hundred bucks to get your uh, business license approved through the government. And it's, it's, it's not going to get denied, people. Unless you just have a bedroom inside of your office. It's not going to get denied. So you can get approved by the government. It's going to take you 30 like $35 down at City Hall to get your, your, uh, your license to put on your wall. So once you get your license through the state, I mean your license through the city to operate the business. And once you get your, your uh, business license approved through the government, which all together you're looking at $130 to start you a proper business. Think of you a good business name. Have a good place to start your business. Once you have the business name and once you have the place to start your business, open it up. Even if I got I got two or three uh, businesses right now, they're not making no money. I'm not worried about it. I still work. I'm not worried about my business not making no money. You know why? Because at the end of the day, a year from now, two years from now. Both of my businesses are going to have a seven to eight hundred dollar, uh, seven to eight hundred credit rating. That means, regardless of whether I make money or not in these businesses, I can go down there and get a thirty, forty thousand dollar credit card under my business name. And if I want to go out here and buy a BMW for my business, I can do that. It ain't going to be nothing. I'm going to have it under my business. It's going to be used for my business, which is traveling under my business. So I'm trying to give you the game. It's free. I'm giving it to you. This is my contribution back to my community. This is what I do. This is my community service. Because I feel it's necessary, man, to get us out of the financial plight that we're in in this country. Ain't nobody else doing it. I'm not finna sit here and rag on Donald Trump all day long because I know what he about. A lot of some some of y'all sleeping. Sleeping behind the wheel. I know what he about. The South after the Civil War said he they're gonna rise again. And they doing it. We're gonna get into that though on, a, on another program. But right now, I'm gonna finish up with the EINs. Get your business license if you just have to have two streams of credit. Get your business license, get your EIN number, and build credit on it slowly. Build credit on it slowly. Every two months, sacrifice that $180. Sacrifice that $250. Go down there. Give me a call. Uh, if you don't have my phone number, if you're my Facebook friend, inbox me. Say, hey, man, I want to. I want a trade line. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take your name and your phone number, and I'm going to get you in contact with my guy. 
he's a he, he's a rip. He 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 works for matter of fact, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the company name. He works for the Trade Line Supply Company, and I'm gonna hook you up. These are legitimate people. Then you can look, you can Google them, you can look them up, you can you can look at their uh uh, you can look at their business rating on Google Analytics. You can go through all of that. These people are legit. They're legit. They're sanctioned through the government to sell people trade lines. So if you want to get your credit score back right, hit me up. I got you. I'm gonna put you in contact with the right people. And we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see about getting you a 680, a 700, or 800 credit rating on your credit report. That's my contribution back to you. Now uh I'm gonna end this program. I want to thank all of you for uh tuning in, all my Facebook family and friends. This will be my first and last live Facebook show because uh and if I do post on Facebook uh it'll probably be snippets of my show and the reason why is because I'm trying to get a deal with our heart radio if I get a deal with our heart radio and I start uh, uh streaming live it will be broadcast and I don't want to uh uh uh, get into any copyright infringements as far as showing a whole entire show on Facebook. So, so uh, you know, wish me luck. This is my show, The Daily Read with Marcus Gentry. We're going we're gonna to give it to you live. I'm, I'm going to have a, another show that I'm working on. It's called The Masonic Journals. Now, The Masonic Journals is going to be uh, sort of like a newspaper, a journal to where Masons that I know from all over the country that do good work in the craft, that help people, that, that do charity work, they can contact me about events and things that they're having in their community, and I will broadcast it. I'll have Masons and, and Sisters and, 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 and you know all the people that, that's under that umbrella come in here sometimes and sit and talk about things that they're doing in the community. We just had a, a, a cookout at a church in Nashville uh, I think it was yesterday and I was, I was sad. I couldn't, I was trying to get prepped for this show and I missed it. And I want to, you know, give a shout out to my brothers. Y'all did a good job. And that's why Nimrod nine, you know, we, we got large of the year and I'm proud of us. I'm proud of my brothers and, you know, we're going to keep doing good things in the community and we're going to keep doing, you know, we're going to keep working. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about that work and we're going to keep working at it. We're going to keep being great. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to help other brothers be great, well, other brothers and sisters. And, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep giving back. And I'm, I'm going to end this program. I love you all. Peace. All right. All right, Facebook. I appreciate you all for tuning in to my first show. It's going down. It's going down. Yeah, I can give you a good uh, website to go to uh, uh, for trade lines. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'll give you the website, but if you go through me, I can get you some deals. <laughs> if you go, but, I, but you know what? I'm not even going to monetize that. I'm not even going to monetize that. I'm going to post uh, uh, one of my sites to get you some good trade lines. And uh, and if you if you good if you if you feel comfortable, you know, with this. And if you don't, come back, and I and I I'll talk, I'll get you on the phone with Corey, my guy. I get you on the phone with him right away. Matter of fact, I tell you what, anybody that wants to get involved with getting their credit back right without having to pay ninety nine dollars a month and. Have people uh, messing with your credit and fixing your credit and all. Man, you ain't got to do that. Now, that don't mean that that debt is going to ever leave unless you do that. So, so they still want you to pay the debt that you already got. But trade lines will help 
uh, boost your credit rating up even more over what you already owe. So it basically, it doesn't cancel it out because you still owe it, but it boosts it up. You see what I'm saying? So say your credit rated is 450 and all you can get is a $400 loan. You pay $250 and add $14,000 worth of credit to your credit score. It'll boost it up. You know what I'm saying? It'll boost it up to a 600-something credit rating to where you can go out and get more loans. But I'm, I'm telling you, do it the right way, people. All my Facebook family friends, do it the right way. Don't just go right out after two or three months and get you a credit card a ten thousand dollar credit card just because your credit done boosted up to six eighty to seven hundred or eight hundred. No, wait a year. Every two months, boost your credit up. Wait, wait two months. Pay the pay the money. You know what I'm saying? It's they gonna charge you, but it's worth it. If you wanna in in two or three years, you got a plan to be in your own home. It's worth it. Pay the little two fifty every two months. Get you a, a decent. Uh, credit rating after about two after about a year get about an 800 credit score and then go out and purchase a home for you and your family now you still got to pay for the home now this is not going to pay the, the house off you still got to pay your mortgage but at least you know if you know you've been working hard all your life and you keep seeing the same people down the corner from you man they got a nice house man i know dude work at the same place i work at how the hell he get this nice ass house he got to be hustling. That ain't necessarily true. You can do the same thing. And that's why I get mad at, at people who uh, talk bad about these foreigners. These foreigners come here and utilize the things that are at our disposal. You understand what I'm saying? They utilize the same things that we have access to. So don't get mad at them. Just start utilizing it yourself. You know, them Mexicans don't mind going down there because they, they come here and get the green card. They don't have no credit under their new Social Security number because they're just like babies. They just came to this country. They just got a green card, so they have no credit. So what they do is they slowly add after two months. They, they work hard as hell at these construction sites. They, they cough up that two fifty, dollars add 14000 to their credit rating. And then after a year, you see these Mexicans that you know just got here. Riding around in a brand new forty or fifty thousand dollar truck, and you like, how the hell did he do that? I've been here all my life. I can't even get a damn nut but a bucket. You understand what I'm saying? So, so don't get mad at them for doing the things that we can do too. We just ain't taking advantage of it because nobody's putting it out there. And and that's what I'm gonna do for my show. Every time I do a show, I'm gonna do my research for the week. I'm gonna make sure everything I bring you, you can look it up yourself. And 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 I'm gonna give it to you. You know what I'm saying? So so uh, if anybody interested in trade lines to boost your credit and get a higher credit rating, uh, give uh, inbox me. I'm not gonna let you call me because uh, some of y'all might get me in trouble. <laughs> so you know, but my guys call me is cool. But some of y'all women might be interested. And I'm not gonna deny you. But my woman might be like, "Who the hell is that calling you?" I'd be like, "Nah, I'm mean, just inbox me. I got you." You know what I'm saying? I got you. Inbox me on my Facebook and uh, uh, give me your name and your number. And then I'll get you on three-way with, with my guy that works at one of these reputable credit trade uh, trade line companies. And, you know, and yes, he just might slide me something for bringing you to him. But it's helping you. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he might slide me something. He might slide me a couple of hundred bucks. But guess what? At the end of the day, don't worry about my pockets. Worry about getting your credit right because I'm getting my credit right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm going to get out of here, man. I love all y'all, man. Peace out.